Motorboat. Motorboat. Oh, Motorboat. She has the most nicknames of all of our dogs. Uh, Fun, Funamana, uh, Monkadunk, Black Beauty, Shiny Black Beauty, uh, Funkadelic, Deli, Deli, Delic. Uh, Bebop was a border staffy that I had. She was the next mixed breed dog that I got after having ping pong. Um, she was half border collie, half staff and triple terrier. And she was probably one of the most friendly dogs I have ever owned. She was pretty wiggly and crazy and very friendly, loved my mother. And I know that uh, she had a ton of potential, um, but she was uh, she was a challenge to train because she was sort of um, very very energetic. So she had a hard time focusing on one thing all the time because she was just like a busy bee everywhere. Um, unfortunately, though, when she was 11 months old or 10 months old, I think uh, she got hit by a car, and um, it was sort of a hard situation because it was on our property and it was just a really unfortunate accident so at that time uh, I was uh, pretty devastated so devastated actually that I stopped training dogs I stopped competing I still taught classes I was still involved with the family business but I didn't really do any dogs for myself um, I just didn't feel like it every time I did anything you know to do with training I it just made me really upset and I did have other dogs at the time that were really competitive I had a couple border collies and uh, another mix at, at the time but yeah I should feel like it so that was uh, a pretty significant thing because it was sort of my whole world and uh, I dropped it pretty quickly so uh, two years later after Bebop's death um, a very good friend of mine who bred Bebop uh, let me know that he was rebreeding a very similar cross, uh, same dad, different mom, and the mom happened to be one of the Border Collies that he owned that I was really smitten with. Her name was Bustin, or is Bustin. Um, so he said that I would be, you know, welcome to get a puppy if I really wanted to, come and check them out, and I sort of denied it at the time, said I wasn't really interested, uh, but who can resist going to see baby puppies? So off I went to see the puppies. They were about five weeks old, or four weeks old the first time I saw them, and um, I ended up going back, I think, almost every single week. So as I continued going uh, to visit the puppies, I started to... Um, think that I maybe would want them. I, they were just a really great litter. Uh, whenever I'm going to get a new dog, I always have my dad come and look at the puppies. He has like this magical way of selecting the perfect dog for me. And actually the perfect dog for many people. He has picked many people's heart dogs. I don't know how he does it or what he does, but he just can do it. So I brought him along with me and I had it narrowed down to two puppies. Um, Funky, who was in that litter, uh, did not interest me. Um, a lot of the time when I would go, she would be off in a corner doing something or following Aaron around. She was obsessed with Aaron, and so I didn't really think she was anything. And so we did a bunch of puppy tests, and my dad said, you need to take that one, and he was referring to Funky. And I thought, well, I don't really like her. She doesn't really do anything for me. And he said, that's the best puppy. That's the one you need to take. So uh, I remember, I'll never forget, I just trusted him because he's never steered me wrong before and I remember driving home and Funky was sitting on my lap and I remember thinking to myself this puppy's really cute but I still don't really like her <laughs> I didn't really like her that much which is really strange and maybe it was because I was still sad who knows um, but boy did that change so when I finally got Funky home and I started to do you know my normal puppy training routine I started to realize that um, she was a pretty cool dog. She loved to work. She loved to learn. Um, and I think because I had like a new project or something to to work on or to distract me, she sort of became like my whole my whole focus. Uh, she also was like you never know it right now because she's just sitting so patiently but she was really, really busy. So I had to do a lot of things to kind of keep her focused. So out of all the dogs, oh, hi, Mitch, man. 
Out of all the dogs I own, she by far knows the most tricks, the most ridiculous tricks, because I just kept thinking of things to do to kind of entertain her, to keep her, uh, to keep her focused. Um, but what I started to quickly realize is that she was totally different than Bebop. And although I loved Bebop, uh, she was like almost a better match for me than Bebop was because if there's anything that people know about Funky, especially those who are close to me in my life, Funky is 1000% my dog uh, and no one else's. And I mean, she's lived with Ken now for years and years and years. And although she, you know, listens to him and, and she loves him, uh, when push comes to shove, she is my dog. <laughs> and I, I'm not going to lie. I love that about her. <laughs> so once we did a lot of our basic training, I obviously started to do some agility training since that was my ultimate goal. Uh, and what a lot of people probably don't realize is that uh, she she was not really initially looking like she was going to be my next hotshot agility dog. Um, there was something about agility that was very stressful for her and now that we've been through it and I you know have more knowledge as a trainer and whatnot I think our connection is so close that she did not do well when I would be disappointed about something and as some of you may know who participate in agility agility is filled with ups and downs um, it is not a sport that anybody can be perfect at all of the time and I never was you know upset with her or anything like that but even if I sighed or was frustrated in the slightest bit even if it was at myself fun was shut down and when I first started training her although she's a very motivated dog she wasn't confident and if things would go wrong or if we did a sequence and she you know did something wrong or I cued her the wrong way uh, she would totally shut down and almost was so slow that she would walk actually I remember a competition I went to um, one time I had just gotten back from a world championship uh, she wasn't participating at she wasn't old enough yet she was just doing her regionals or something for the first time and uh, I had lost um, ping pong my oldest dog at the time and I was just in such a bad way mentally at the competition that funky would go into the tunnels and then she would not come out because she was so concerned about my feelings so that was really difficult because I knew that she had a lot of potential but we weren't really putting anything together and you know a lot of people of my um, experience level we come out with you know these new dogs to compete with at two three years old and they usually are doing really well and everybody wants to watch to see how they're gonna do they want to follow the training they want to see exactly what's going on there is a lot of pressure when you're in a position um, that I am in to be perfectly successful with every single dog that you come out with. And I was definitely feeling that. I was much younger at the time and I really cared about what people thought. And I was really sort of stressed about going out and competing with her and her being slow or shutting down and having people, you know, talk behind my back. Oh, look at Kale's new hotshot dog. She sucks, she's slow. I oh, no, not you. See, I'm even, she can tell I'm getting emotional right now and look at this is what she does. Is she stress yawns and then she gets closer. Due to Funky's lack of confidence, I decided to wait another year before I did any competing with her and to show her off at all. Because I knew that I wasn't ready mentally to, to compete with her. She wasn't really re ready. She wasn't really reliable with her speed. She had pretty good skills, but the speed just was not there. So I waited a year and um, I changed my training plan completely with her. I stopped doing all the fancy stuff. We did lots of straight lines, tiny little bits of turns, all things that we could both be really successful at, successful at, and I basically just focused on building her up, building her up, building her up. And you may have seen in previous vlogs me talk about baby. Well, that was a game changer for us. Once I could figure out what um, reward was so powerful that she could take my emotion out of her response to the reward, it really helped. So that little silly, ball with feet she just thinks it is like the most wonderful toy ever created and I'm thankful for that because I'm able to utilize it and if I have a bad run or something she's off chomping on baby you know getting her high and I can do what I need to do and it doesn't affect her so that was uh, that was a really important uh, change for us waiting all of that time before competing with funky I think really paid off because um 
I believe she was three or almost four um, by the time I entered my first big competition, which was uh, the Ontario Regional Championships, and she ended up winning the whole thing, which was really exciting. Um, she ran wonderfully. We ended up winning uh, the steeplechase event as well, and I believe we ended up uh, winning that four years in a row. Steeplechase is her, is her course. There's lots of straight lines and not a lot of turning. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think that was one of the best uh, training decisions I could have made for her. Um, during that time though, I was doing lots of other things. So not just agility, I played fly ball with her. And in fly ball, she was like a completely different dog. She was an animal. I probably could have set her legs on fire and she would have not even noticed because she was so crazy about getting the ball, crazy about getting the tug toy. So there was something that was not um, stressful or she didn't feel any pressure in the sport of agility, which helped her, um, I meant to say fly ball, it helped her agility. It allowed her to play a sport without having any stress and sort of learn to, you know, give it her all and not worry about the results and I think that also helped um, us improve in the sport of agility as well. When people see Funky today I think they see this like wild beast on the start line. She's definitely well known for when I leave her on the start line. She barks her head off. She just she foams at the mouth. She just looks like a wild woman and I have a lot of people say oh you must be so crazy to live with her. She must be just wild and you know loud all the time and it's like Funky has like an alter ego uh, when she's on the start line and I think that's partly my fault. I used to just, you know, rev her up and let her be as crazy as she wanted to be so that I could get, you know, speed out of her. But when it comes to the Funky Monkey that we know at home, she is the biggest lump. Her favorite thing to do is to, you know, get all the covers and sleep underneath them. She is a big snuggle bug. She just... I can get up and get completely ready for work or anything in the morning and she doesn't even want to get out of the bed because it's warm. She's very um, sensitive, she gets along wonderfully with her other dogs. Um, back when I used to teach uh, puppy classes, I would always teach with her. She's just such a well-rounded, even-tempered dog. She could uh, go and play with the rough and tumble puppies and tell them tell them off when they needed to be disciplined or I could put them in, put her in with like the tiny little Bichons or the you know the toy poodles that were really bashful and she would be very calm and gentle with them she just is just a, just a great well-rounded type of dog and yeah she can be wild and crazy sometimes when she's playing agility but um, she just has a really nice nature this <laughs> this is a pretty good example she loves to snuggle that's for sure I would have to say the biggest accomplishment that we have made um, was getting to the World Championships in the first place because I honestly think that that wasn't in the cards for her or for us together as a team. Um, the second World Championships that we went to was in 2013, so she was born in 2007, so this gives you an idea of how old she was by the time I, I took her to a World Championship. So in 2013, uh, we went to Belgium and at that World Championship she won the gold medal in every event that was there. So there's three events to compete in and she won the gold for each of them and I believe we had a perfect clear round uh, weekend so not one fault in any course. I honestly not sure I will ever be able to replicate that again. Maybe even with her or with any other dog like that is just that is like that's very very challenging to do and if I do it again great and if not then that will definitely probably go down in history for me um, but since then we've we've done a lot of uh, competing we've uh, done several world championships in different venues WAO and uh, the European Open a couple times uh, WAO seems to be her uh, big event stands for World Agility Open uh, we were just in Netherlands actually uh, a few months ago competing at the World Championship. So she is going to be 10 in September, which is uh, a couple days away actually. And I can't believe it, but um, I think she's still got a few more years in her. Uh, she hasn't really slowed down yet. She hasn't limped a day in her life. Trust those mutts, they're <laughs> so reliable. But yeah, she's. Uh, definitely a really important member of this uh, of our family um, in our pack she's pack leader small but mighty over here keeps everybody in line so yeah she turned out to be probably one of the best teachers I have ever had as far as being a dog trainer 
or a handler uh, or an instructor. She has taught me a lot that I've been able to pass on to other people. So pretty lucky to have her.